Not today. All right, <laughs> you're, you are now going. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to boosting your immune system through uh, wellness practices. I'm Connie. Welcome to my home. <laughs> um, as you're coming in uh, to the webinar, if you could just put in the chat box, if you like, uh, your name and how you're feeling today, that would be fabulous. And I'm going to start us off with just a, a sound, and I'll show you the instrument that I'm making a sound with. They're Tibetan chimes. And so I'm just going to uh, ring this once for us to begin. Maybe again. There we go. Thank you. Well, I um, got into this kind of webinar because of COVID and I was really feeling isolated from all my friends around the world. And I thought, what could I do to connect with everyone so that we could um, practice something together and feel some peace. And so I developed an article, uh, did some research on wellness practices that I've done for many years on how they boost the immune system. From that, I started building a webinar just to go over simple techniques that will help us uh, in boosting our immune system, keeping us healthy, and also relaxing us at the same time. So um, this is meant to be an um, interactive uh, webinar, so uh, feel free to use the chat box as often as you like. Um, Vicki is also looking at your screens and you can make a uh, thumbs up or thumbs down or any other kind of facial gesture that you might have in response to um, anything that we're doing so that I know um, if, if you like the techniques or not. Um, hi, Jamie from Philadelphia, and I'm glad you're feeling good today. I'm, I'm feeling good today as well. Um, I'm a little anxious about um, the world and how we're taking care of ourselves, and I'm, I'm hopeful um, that we all get through this healthy and safely through the next, through the end of the year and beyond. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the first um, wellness practice, um, kind of putting together affirmations, which are simple sentences to um, affirm yourself, and gratitude. Um, both of these um, kind of things, affirmations and gratitudes, change the chemistry of your brain and move it to a happy place. Uh, in scientific terms, it um, you know, increases your serotonin level, it, it moves you to a different part of the brain, and so there are feelings of happiness that you have. Hi Mark, and, and thanks for joining us. Okay, so affirmations are just simple sentences, and um, you can say them when you get up in the morning, when you, if you might be feeling blue or isolated, um, and the same thing for gratitude. I often, when, before I get out of bed, I say thank you. You know, I'm, I just thank you for waking me up another day and allowing me to go forward. Um, thank you for a good night's sleep. And just to be honest, I'm not having good night's sleep, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Isolated. Um. So um, affirmations are simple sentences that start with an I. I choose. I choose to be happy. I choose to be balanced. I choose Thank to be for peaceful. I am healthy today. 
And you can um, say these with me or after me or write them down and say them whenever you want. I feel my breathing is good today. I feel healthy today. I woke up feeling peaceful. I am grateful for my children, for my cats. I'm grateful for air conditioning today. Those are all uh, gratitude that I'm really happy about this morning as the, as the heat in Philadelphia continues to rise. So I, I'd just like to take a minute to say, uh, if you, you want to repeat after me, I'm going to say three affirmations and give you time to say them too. So you just sit comfortably or stand comfortably wherever you are in your home. I am healthy. I am feeling peaceful in this moment. I choose joy today. So those are different kinds of affirmations. Gratitude, are, um, I have gratitude lists that I, I write um, throughout the day. Just remember the simple things that I'm grateful for. Um, with the pandemic, I've also lost track of time. Like, what day is it? Now, what month is it? So to help me, I've uh, made a gratitude calendar, which is just a simple calendar with a little space in each day. And during the day, I write something that has happened with gratitude. You know, I cooked a great meal today. I'm grateful for summertime, even though it's hot today. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes my daughter and I will watch a movie and I'll put that in my gratitude calendar. I had a great time with my daughter today. So those are the first two things, affirmations and gratitude. And now I'm gonna move to uh, another two themes, breathing and meditation. I, I've chosen breathing and, and really different techniques of breathing because I feel like this whole pandemic is about bringing air into your body. It's very important that we keep breathing and use our full breath to get air to our body. Now, when we breathe, it actually can change the, the um, nervous system to a relaxation state. So if you're feeling a bit anxious, the simplest technique is to put your hand on your heart and your hand on your belly. As you do that, you can feel your heart beat. And as you breathe in, you feel your belly expand. And as you exhale, you feel your belly contract or move inward, your belly button inward. As we breathe, we want to breathe in through our nose if we can. And when we exhale, we can exhale through our mouth or our nose. The most important thing in breathing to calm yourself is that the exhale be twice as long as the inhale. In this way, it automatically shifts the brain and relaxes the body. So let's try just three breaths because with three breaths, we can shift our breathing. And feel free to put in the chat um, if you're 
feeling a little bit calmer after we do this exercise. So let's breathe in, feeling our belly expand and slowly breathe out. Nice and slow. Everybody has their own rate. So when you're ready, breathe in again. Belly expands and breathe out slowly. Last time breathing in, feeling your belly expand and breathing out slowly. Navel going in toward your spine. So how'd that feel? Anybody thumbs up, worked? I didn't really feel it today. I'm happy, I'm happy to know how it felt for you. Yes, breathing in and out is a very calming thing to do. Um, and breathing kind of goes in hand in hand with meditation. Uh, for myself, I'm a master danceability teacher and we, uh, in our warm up, go through a guided meditation that moves us from stillness to moving. So I thought today I would do a bit of that warm up, that guided meditation. And meditation can be lots of different things, uh, but this is a guided one, and I'll talk about other kinds of meditation after we do this. So for right now, make yourself comfortable. Your feet might be on a chair, might be on the floor. Relax your shoulders. You can have your eyes open or closed. So take about maybe three or four minutes. So here we go. Call your attention. and place your attention on the sensation of your body breathing. Your breath to the air, your weight to the earth. Feeling supported by the earth, and allowing your breath to the air. And allow your body to breathe. Your whole body breathes. Your feet breathe. Your legs breathe. Your pelvis and your back all breathe. Your shoulders breathe. Your arms breathe. Your fingertips, your neck, and your face all breathe. Your whole body breathes. Your skin holds your muscles. Your muscles hold your bones. The bones of your spine and rib cage Contain your lungs and your heart. As you breathe, your lungs massage your heart. 
and your heart pumps blood and oxygen to all parts of your body. Your whole body breathes. Just take a moment to feel the sensation of your whole body breathing. And now if you had your eyes closed, you can open them. And feel free to do a thumbs up or a thumbs down or write in the chat how that short meditation was for you. Hey Mark, I'm glad you're feeling good. That's great. This is just a simple, what we call body scan meditation. What you're doing is putting your attention on different parts of your body and just allowing your breath to go a little deeper, getting that oxygen to all those good places that it needs to be to keep you healthy. The other technique that we used was putting your hand on your heart and your hand on your belly. And then the third technique we used was taking three inhales and exhalations. And when we exhale, we're remembering to exhale twice as long as the inhale. So you have three different techniques that you can try this week. And let me know how your body responds um, to each of those meditation techniques. So one of the things um, that really concerns me during this pandemic is connection. And um, as a human species, we need to connect to each other. One of the things I love about Disability Pride Philadelphia is that it, its intention is to connect people with and without disabilities together to grow in community. And uh, especially this month, the month of July that, that we're celebrating 30 days for the ADA, I feel like I feel very connected to lots of people. There's so many events happening that um, it's easy just to check in, connect with some performances, some talks, and feel connected to a community. I do a lot of um, travel internationally uh, for disability, um, and I'm really missing my communities. And so it's so important for me to have virtual platforms that I can stay connected to people. Uh, whether it's family, friends, or networks. Um, I'm always so happy if I can't be there in person that I can be there virtually. So I hope that you will join us um, throughout the next couple weeks uh, and connect yourself with this community. The next technique the fourth kind of area that I'm gonna talk about today is exercise. And exercise does not mean going to the gym. In fact, we can't go to the gym. <laughs> but exercise is so important to keep your body healthy because human beings, or human beings, I just made us a vegetable. Human beings were made to move. So today I'm just going to focus on some simple movements and everybody is going to move a little differently because your body moves differently. So you're not trying to imitate me, but just interpret the movement 
so that um, you can achieve um, some movement wherever you're at. I'm going to be sitting. I'm going to stay sitting, but you can stand. Um, and I'm really thinking about the area of my torso and my arms. Um, I'm thinking about moving my arms in an upward motion to really allow my rib cage to open up. If you want to do this with me, I'm just getting a little movement side to side in my rib cage. You might even try and move your rib cage in different directions, forward and backward, side to side, maybe in circles. Just to get that, you can also add your arms side to side. It's a nice stretch, really helping stretch this area so that when you take a deep breath, you can get more air into your lung cavity and bring your arms down. Also very important is rotating so that you I have a swivel chair, so I'm going to try to keep it still. You use the body and twist and you can extend your arms or not. You could just simply twist in your chair, but to get the motion of the twist in your body engages your abdominal muscles in a way that they all work together. So let's just take a few moments here and just do some twisting. If you're using your arms, you can twist side to side and stretch out. You can also stretch up on a diagonal while you twist, or maybe look down to the earth. So we're just allowing our torso to move around a little bit stretching side to side and across just to allow our rib cage and all the muscles in our rib cage to have some movement. <laughs> the, the next um, exercise we're gonna do, we're just gonna simply bring our head down and make a kind of curve of your body and then stretch it up and allow your sternum, your, your collarbone to stretch up to the ceiling. And then your nose goes to the earth and stretching up collarbone, breastbone to the ceiling. Allowing your spine to get some movement allowing your upper lobes of your lungs to get a little bit of a stretch. So I'm a big advocate of movement. Um, we're actually gonna have a danceability uh, happy hour, uh, hour and a half coming up. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, you can have dance parties whenever you want. I highly suggest that you put on your favorite music at some point in the day, and music has a wonderful effect on, your favorite music has a wonderful effect on your nervous system as well. And you have a two minute dance party or a three minute dance party by yourself, with a friend, or virtual, which we will be doing soon. So exercise is also a part. So um, I'm going to take a few minutes. Uh, if you have some questions about moving the body uh, in response to exercise, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, you can put them in the chat. Or if uh, Vicki wants to unmute, people can ask a question. You can also go into your cupboard and grab a few cans of beans or whatever kind of canned food you have and use them as weights as you move to get a little uh, resistance. You can also do a thumbs up or thumbs down as you moved. I see a, a comment, snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> yeah, our body makes a lot of sounds as we move.
So uh, right now, um, danceability, uh, someone asked if we do this regularly. I am, um, we have built a virtual platform that's gonna be launched for danceability classes. Uh, we had to work out all the accessibility um, concerns because danceability is for everybody. Um, and we um, eliminate isolation through building communities of people with and without disabilities. Um, so I'll be starting these probably um, at the end of July. Um, and uh, I'll ask Vicki if she can um, send some information out and I will get some information out as well. So that's a really good question. What does everybody mean? It means that um, danceability has a method that we can work with all people on the planet simultaneously. So um, to, to make a very sh a short list, we can work with people with physical disabilities, professional dancers, intellectual disabilities, neurotypical, uh, vision loss, hearing loss, simultaneously in a dance class. We spent 35 years working on this dance method. Uh, it's based on uh, improvisation and we value um, expression over function. So we're not interested in any technique on your body. We're interested in you finding the movement in your body. Does that help? I hope that helps. Um, if you want to know more about danceability, you can go to our website, which is danceability.com, or you can um, contact Vicki Landers and she will um, put you in touch with me, or you can email me at Connie Vanderakis. It's a long name. I'll spell it for you. V-A-N-D-A-R-A-K-I-S at gmail.com. And maybe Vicki, you could put that in the chat as well. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Great. So um, yes, very important to move and I'm excited to um, bring this on a virtual platform to you at the end of July as well. Thank you, Vicki, for putting yours too. Um, the next consideration that I'd like to to show to you is um, one is relaxation and the second is sleep. They are different from each other um, and the goals are different. Uh, many of us are working from home and we, our work hours are kind of um, up in the air. So sometimes we work all day, all night, and it's important to have boundaries so that we can move our body and our mind to a relaxed state. This is important for the immune system because as we continue to work and work and work, we're actually stressing the body, which is decreasing our immune system. So we have to take time in our day to balance work and relaxation. Relaxation means a lot of different things <clears throat> for different people. For some people, relaxation is reading a book or listening to an audio book. For some people, it's cooking dinner and uh, sitting with your family and having dinner. For some people, it's Netflix or whatever virtual platform you're, you're viewing um, your favorite shows from. It could be stretching. But it's, it's not working. So you, you have to make a conscious shift. Okay, I'm done with work. I'm going to relax. And sometimes you have to remind yourself that I'm in relaxation mode. And relaxation mode can happen shortly um, before sleep or if you have time during the day. So one of the things, if you have a very active mind like I do, is that sometimes it's hard to turn off my mind to get to the relaxation mode. So I keep a short little journal uh, on my desk 
And when my brain won't shut off, I just go to the desk and I write a little note to myself. Okay, reminder, do this tomorrow. And that helps me um, keep the switch off instead of on in terms of relaxation. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the transition from relaxation to sleep. Because um, when you're a child, your parents actually have a routine for you. So your body knows that you're getting ready to go to sleep. For instance, you get your pajamas on, you brush your teeth, maybe you have a little uh, glass of water, you read a bedtime story, and then you might have a few other rituals, and then you go to sleep. Well, adults need rituals too, and it helps us tell our mind that it's time to go to sleep. One of uh, the worst inventions and the best inventions is the cell phone. Uh, if we keep our cell phone by our bed, there's a couple things that can happen. One, uh, we hear all the little noises that it makes, which call our attention out of sleep and distract us. Um, it can also, if we wake up, we can go straight to our phone and keep ourselves occupied for an hour, and that's an hour that we're missing in our sleep. Now, I have children, and uh, they don't, some of them don't live with me, and so while I, I do keep my phone in my bedroom, I don't keep it where I can grab it. I actually have to get up and go to the phone to get my phone. So I have to make a conscious decision to get to my phone. But it, um, so a couple things of transferring from relaxation to sleep. If you're getting your PJs on before you hit Netflix, then you're telling your body, uh, we thought we were getting ready for sleep, but now I'm gonna have an active mind because I'm in relaxation mode and I need to pay attention to this movie. So it's very specific that you make rituals that show the transition that you're going to sleep. Um, it's important, if you can, to have a darkened room so that light isn't interfering with your sleep. Uh, there are many lovely apps that you can use for meditation, for calming, for good sleep. Um, my favorite is the rain app, where it's just a constant rainstorm and I'm listening to that. But it's very important that uh, you use techniques that can allow you to fall asleep. Many of us aren't sleeping uh, because our, our rhythms are off with this pandemic. I know I've had a hard time sleeping. So what are the things you can do if you wake up and you can't go back to sleep? One is you can get up, you can do a little stretching, you can do a little movement, you could make um, some chamomile tea. Um, there are also uh, homeopathic things like melatonin. I'm not an expert in that field, but you could talk to somebody who could guide you um, for homeopathics. You could read. Um, oftentimes reading puts me to sleep, so uh, reading 10 pages of books will make me drowsy again. But I physically have to move myself out of bed into a different room, attend to whatever tax, ta task that I'm doing, whether it's making tea, stretching, reading a book. Um, when I finish that, then I leave that space and try to go back to sleep. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but having a routine definitely helps. So I hope those um, tips about sleep patterns and relaxation patterns help you um, as you go through your week. And as we're going to do another seminar on, um, I think on the 11th, I might be wrong on that, uh, but we can continue this or we can dive deeper into different techniques. Oh, thanks for, um, thanks for the comment. 
Yeah, so routines are hard for all of us, but some people do have uh, harder times with routines. Um, often I have to um, write a routine for myself daily because it changes from day to day. Um, so you, you have, sometimes you have to be patient with yourself. Uh, you have to be graceful to see what works and what doesn't work. And um, the most important things are self-care and self-love during this time. So um, those are our um, tips or our wellness practices for this webinar, and I'm just gonna review them um, so we have them all. Affirmations. Affirmations are simple statements. I feel, I choose. Um, uh, what's my third one? Oh, I am. I am feeling happy. I have joy in my heart being with all you people today. Uh, it made my day. Gratitude. Gratitude is being thankful. And for me, it's the simple things that are going on in my life. Uh, food, water, air conditioning, uh, summer sun, uh, hopefully some summer rain as well. Um, so affirmations, gratitude, breathing. Remember that um, you can always change uh, your perspective, your, your brain, the anxiety by taking three deep breaths with the exhalation twice as long as the inhalation. Meditation. Meditation, we did three different techniques. The first one was to breathe three times, in and out. The second one was to put our hand on our heart and our hand on our belly. Third one was to uh, do a body scan. So going through the different parts of your body, putting your attention on those parts, feeling the sensation of your breath going into those body parts, and then feeling the experience of when you put your attention into those body parts. So after meditation, we talked about connecting. And right now for us, virtual is the biggest platform of connecting with us. And I really hope uh, that you connect with Disability Pride on our celebration for the ADA in the next couple of weeks. Then we talked about exercise. Exercise means moving your body in your own ways, really trying to give your rib space, your, your torso, some, some stretches to get some movement and some more air into your lung capacity. We talked about relaxation. We talked about sleep, different routines that you can do to help your brain tell yourself that it's time to sleep. So I think I would love to open uh, the platform up for questions or comments. Was there something that we did that made a lot of sense to you? Was there an exercise that we did where you have more questions? I'm happy to take those questions. Um, you can put it in the chat and I will see it. Or uh, Vicki, if you want to unmute everybody, they might have a question to ask. I'm happy that I oh, got to sorry. be here. I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know that I'm, I'm actually unmuting everybody so that they could actually say something if they, if they would like. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. If you have something you want, would like to say to Connie, um, just, um, you know, hello, thank you for what you did today, uh, whatever it is, um, you can actually open up your mic and say something now. I think Jamie is here. Um. Hi, Jamie. 
Hi, Jamie. Hi, hi. I'm sorry. I was trying to see if I was unmuted. You are. <laughs> so this was really great. I'm wondering if Danceability has a website. It does. Um, Vicki put it in the chat. It's simply danceability, it's all one word, dot com. Great. Thanks. Yeah, we've been around for 35 years. So yeah, check that out. And if you have any questions, feel free. Uh, my email is in the chat as well to contact me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know, um, Jamie, that you do a lot. Um, you, you have done some dance um, with folks at Temple. Jamie actually works for the Institute on Disabilities. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, Jamie, I uh, did a project with Vicki and uh, we had 22 dancers and we did the on display project two years ago, three years ago now, uh, where we did a two hour site specific performance um, in uh, uh, Suburban Station. I think I remember seeing some of that uh, performance. Was everyone dressed in white? Yes, we were. Yes, we were. I did see some of that. Yeah. Um, Vicki is absolutely right. I had the um, opportunity to participate in a class at Temple that um, one of their dance MFA graduate students was doing in conjunction with Pennsylvania Adaptive Sports. And uh, in addition to taking the class, the student, whose name was Dawn States, um, asked a couple of us to join her in her dance thesis. So I actually got to perform dance on my scooter as part of her dance thesis at Temple, which was really exciting. Oh, that's great. And, and what year was that? That was just this past February. Oh, wow. Fabulous. Yes, we will be showing um, a piece of that called Break of Day um, on July 14th at 5.30. Good to know. Oh, good. You put it in the chat. Absolutely. Hey, Mark. How are you? Hi. I'm doing fine, Vicki. Hi, Connie. Hello, everyone. Hi. I just want you to know that I play Yahtzee on Pogo. Um, Every night before I do that, I turn down my lights, turn off my lights, play a couple games of Yahtzee on Pogo, and uh, I find it really, really, really relaxes me. There, I'll get it out. Sometimes so much that I'll fall asleep during the game, and then I'll have to wake up and turn it off. But I find it, I find it really relaxes me, and I have a service cat mc cuddles and he um usually he usually sleeps with me so that helps and he's been a great help during this time of a uh, quarantine absolutely our pets are really important to us and i do have two cats as well i'm glad that you have a routine you know you so I, so I think mc would like me to go to a go out of the house and go to a meeting or something. I think he's a little tired of seeing me. <laughs> because um, before all this happened, I used to, um, well, like, like a lot of us did, we used to go to rallies and uh, National Adapt and everything. And he, uh, I think my cat is tired of seeing me around the house. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, I, I understand that. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, um, I'm sure your cat is happy that you're there. Because, yeah, he is. Yes, yes. Because, um, you know, you're getting uh, the element of touch, which is a, 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 a humans need to be touched. And so we, we get that uh, through sensation, you know, of our skin and we can get it through our animals. We can get it from our children when we get our hug or if we're living with other people. But if you're living alone, you know, like uh, danceability has a whole series of exercise that work on the, the sensation of, of touching your skin 
and, and feeling touch and uh, the depth of touch um, through that. And because we come out of what's called a dance form called contact improvisation, the element of touch and moving through to supported weight is very important. So I'm really glad that you brought up your cat and also shared with us your routine because playing uh, Yahtzee is, you know, distracting your mind in a very specific way and you have dimmed your lights so that you're, you're telling your brain it's almost time to go to sleep, but not quite. So I think that's a beautiful routine. Thank you even, for sharing even that. Even before with everyone. the pandemic, I got back to it and I found, I found that I sleep much better. So I'm sticking with it. Awesome. Sounds great. I'm very grateful to that. Yeah. Is there anyone else that would like to share? Wendy, are you there? Oh, yeah. Hi, this is Wendy Elliott Vandiver. I'm really enjoying your presentation today. And I've been doing a lot of yoga uh, for the first time during the retreat, uh, during the, the pandemic and taking part in a lot of exercise classes online. And I'm finding a lot more is available to me now online than, than ever was available before. So there have been some advantages uh, to this. And I, I'd be really interested in learning more about the program that you're going to be offering later this month and um, prices and whether there'll be any uh, thing to help make it affordable for uh, people with disabilities that have limited incomes. Well, I, I, can, I can answer that right now, Wendy, because um, the the classes that I'm going to offer are going to be on a sliding scale. So if you can pay a dollar, you pay a dollar. If you can pay $10, you pay $10. At, um, even if you don't have a dollar, um, I will work out different things with different people. So, you know, I, I don't want to isolate anybody from coming to the class because I, I do know that um, everyone has money concerns right now. And, and I don't want to limit people from coming to class just because of money. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I'm glad you're doing yoga. Yoga is a wonderful form of movement that also is, um, you know, you're, uh, each one of those poses are dealing with um, uh, different um, health systems and in your body, uh, neuromuscularly. And so you're, you're really giving yourself a great boost by doing yoga. Mm -hmm. So good on you. Yeah, it's wonderful. And I identified with Vicky, snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> my neck has been, my neck and shoulders, everything's <laughs> crackling and popping. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's, it's all a part of how our bodies speak. <laughs> right. But thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So I've had a lot of comments um, from Facebook that they're really enjoying this. Um, that they, that we needed to do, we need to do this on a more regular basis. Um, and um, that they're just, that a lot of people are really needing this type of self-care at the moment. So they're really appreciating what you're doing. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for all those comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, self-care and self-love, I think, are our first job during this pandemic uh, because it's, one, something we can do easily, and two, uh, we have some control over our life when we take care of ourselves. Um, so I think both of those things are important. Also, when we take care of ourselves, we can take care of others better. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Izzy just wanted to let you know that she wants to do another on-display type of event. I'm all for it, Izzy. Uh, we, we can do... Uh, Danceability has what we call informances that we do in public spaces. And so uh, when we're allowed to regroup uh, in public again, it would be great to have some rehearsals and do an informance in a public space in Philadelphia. The reason we do in, uh, we call them informances is we really want to educate people uh, that don't have access to a person uh, with a disability that um, we can create fantastic communities with people with and without disabilities together and learn from each other. So yeah, I'm all for it. Yes, I think that would be, I think that, you know, we've been talking about 
doing something like that. Um, so I think that that needs to get on our list. And yes, and I think we can even um, start some rehearsals virtually. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Well, let's get through the 30 days of the ADA and then yeah. we'll move into our danceability classes and then uh, we can shape those classes to, to become rehearsals. Sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think that uh, we have just a few more minutes if anybody has something that they haven't been able to um, say or chat. We'll take those and then we'll close out with uh, just a simple breathing exercise. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, you're welcome, Mary Beth. Remember everybody, we're gonna be doing more of these. I put the dates into the chat. Our next one is on July 11th at 11 a.m. That is a Saturday morning. And then we are having danceability happy hour workshop on uh, July. Oh my gosh, I lost 17th? the date. Yes, seventeenth. Yes, at, at five thirty. Five o'clock, right? Five. I don't know. Thirty. Yes. What if you're not in Philly? How can you participate in your classes? Well, they're, they're done virtually right now, so you don't have to be in Philadelphia. Yes. Oh, um, so they will be starting virtually when they pick up again. Ye yes, yes, because that's the only way we can meet right now. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, so why don't we um, go back to um, our breathing exercise of putting our hand on our heart and our other hand on our belly. And taking three breaths together as a group, as a community. Everybody has their own rate of breathing. Just remember that your exhale will be twice as long as your inhale. So let's start together, breathing in. Filling the belly and then exhaling the belly going in. Second breath in and out. And our last breath in and last breath out. I just want to say thank you to everybody who came on to the webinar and I'm going to uh, make a sound to close out our time together today. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you on the uh, 11th and on the 17th. Thank you. All right.